Welcome to video 17 in a series of introductory videos for SolidCam. This video's topic is turning and grooving. So the turning and grooving toolpaths operate in a similar way, so we're gonna do them both in this same video. We'll start with turning. So let me just open up a turning toolpath. Turning applies to the exterior, the interior, or in other words, the OD and the ID of the part. It really just matters which geometry you choose. We could choose geometry in two ways. We can do it through the wireframe, which is the profile that we generated in video 15, or we can do it with the solid and actually use the solid faces of the part. So let's begin by doing wireframe. So I'll click new geometry. And from that profile, I can grab that edge there. You'll notice that the green sketch that represented our stock from video 16 has now represented the fact that we faced it down to that level there in video 16 using the facing operation. So this toolpath can now start at that edge right there. Like we've seen in other toolpaths in the milling side, I can go and choose the rest of the contour if I like, but in turning, we have the ability to have up to entity turned on, and I can just basically say from what I last selected to this new selection, find the relationship. That's basically just all along that profile. I can accept that, and that is my turning geometry. I wanted to do that using solid. I'll just turn on the solid and I'll go to new. And the way this works is I'll basically say in this view, I'll start from this face, go to this face. And that's actually in the wrong direction. So what I can do is just flip it around to clockwise. And now the chain is in the correct direction. I can click the green check mark and we get the same geometry, the same chain as we did when we used wireframe. as you can see there. So let's go to tool, select our turning tool. Make sure it's mounted correctly. Under levels, again, all we have is a safety distance. So this is the amount of space we're gonna leave between the movement of the tool and the updated stock. Under technology for turning, you can see we actually can do it in four different ways. The OD, the ID, the front, and the back. So whichever direction you need to turn, you have the ability to select that here. Under the roughing tab, we control the roughing parameters. So under rough type, we have smooth and stairs. To see what that basically does, if you look in the bottom left corner, that is the smooth toolpath. If we switch it to stairs, we'll actually just leave scalps behind. So in this case, let's go with smooth. Equal steps of 40 thou. So basically all we're telling it to do is just take 40 thou cuts with each pass. If there is a feature on the part that falls in between those 40 thou steps, that's what the adaptive step down is for. With each pass, we can retract by this much. If you had an insert that allowed it, you could go with a zigzag turning. And since we're doing roughing, we'll leave 20 thou in the X direction and 8 thou in the Z direction. If I wanted to turn at a completely different angle other than just with the rotary axis, I can change that angle from the rotary axis to get it turning in a different direction. Under the semi-finish slash finish tab, we have the ability to add semi-finishing turns and a finishing turn. In this case, let me just put on that and we can turn on our compensation in the finishing side. Under strategies, I can tell it to ignore that, that groove right there by saying non-descending. And all these sharp edges, if I wanted to break some of those edges, I can go to break edges and any internal or external corners, I can add a fillet or a chamfer. Under the link tab, we can actually control the approach points and the lead in lead out. But in this case, I'm just gonna do a save and calculate. And you can see from that tool pass, we just do a simple turning, we're ignoring that groove. And the toolpath knows that that material has already been removed because of that facing toolpath, so it actually started off the part and approached from there. Let's take a look at the groove now. So even though it's a separate operation called grooving, it actually works the same way. So under Mac 1 position 1, let's choose the geometry. The green contour represents the updated stock, so now that all that's been turned, we only need to worry about just doing the groove. So I'm going to choose that edge right there from our profile. Again, up to entity I have turned on. I'll just grab that edge right there. It finds the entire groove for me. If I wanna modify that slightly, I can go to modify geometry. And this holds for all turning toolpaths. As soon as you choose your geometry, if you wanna trim it or extend it, 
You just need to come to Modify Geometry and you can auto extend to the stock. So at the beginning, we'll just make sure we start at the beginning of the stock there. At the end of the stock, I'm gonna trim it so that it doesn't actually need to turn all that. I'm just gonna st stop it maybe right there. So if I click on my geometry, you can see the yellow highlight goes to the end of that little bit of a fillet left. So now we'll just do that bit of the grooving. In terms of tool, let's select the tool. So I'll just add a turning tool. In this case, it knows we're doing grooving, so it's giving me grooving operations. I'm just gonna go with an external grooving tool. Click the green check mark. Make sure it's mounted correctly. If I wanna make sure that that insert is the right size, let's just take a look at the groove from the side, and I'll just click on this little icon here. This insert should do the job. So let me just turn that off. Again, levels is the safety distance away from the part. Technology, we have the same ability as the regular turning tool path. We have OD turning, ID turning, face, and back. In this case, we have grooving, OD, ID, face, and back. For the rough, we can do constant or single turning and grooving. We have a value of 80 thou for the step down, and for the step over of the groove, we have 40 thou. We can tell what cutting order we want to do, so we can do it in rows or columns. And in the direction, we can do side to side, so one side to the other, or we can start from the middle and go out. We can zigzag, we can alternate them, whatever we need to do to get this groove done, depending on the material, depending on our, our strategy. And of course, because we're roughing, we have what we're leaving behind in the X and the Z direction. Semi-finish slash finish, similar to like we just saw with the turning, we just say whatever uh, strategy we want to use for finishing, we can put compensation if we want, Groove parameters is unique to the grooving operation because of course we're moving down uh, radially so we want to control what the plunging conditions would be in terms of our feed rates. And break edges, again, we have the ability to change the internal external corners. Under link, same as before, the approach retract points and lead in lead out. I'll do a save and calculate on that and we can see that the toolpath is doing the side to side grooving. So once we start looking at turning toolpaths, we can actually start using the turning simulation. So I'm gonna do a simulation of all our toolpaths to this point. So HostCAD and Solid Verify, like we've seen previously, shows us what the toolpath is about to do. But in turning, we can use the turning simulation. And all that does is really just gives us this side view of the part. Now we can take a look at our toolpaths individually. So I'm gonna do the facing operation that we did in video 16. Now we can do the outside turning. So again, you can see that there's a side view of the insert, a side view of the shank, side view of the jaws. The orange represents the part and the blue represents the stock that we're removing. This gives us an idea of if the tool is the right size, if the tool is moving in the right direction, the amount of material that's being left behind. And we don't have to look at the, at the solid in any kind of cross-sectional view inside SolidWorks. We can look at this purely as just a simulation. In terms of the grooving, we can take a look at all the options I did there, and there we go. So that is our updated part. Any questions on this or anything else from SolidCam, you can always give us a call at 1-866-975-1115, extension 2. You can send us your parts and your questions via the ticket system at solidcamsupport.com, or stay tuned for the rest of the videos on this YouTube channel. Thanks for watching.